On December 9th, 1983, director Brian De Palma's remake of the 1932 crime drama Scarface was released into cinemas. Starring Al Pacino as the refugee from Cuba, Tony Montana, this Scarface told the tale of a man who had nothing to lose and clawed and killed his way to becoming a powerful drug lord in 1980s Miami, Florida. At the time, critics were not kind to the film with its over-the-top use of violence, language, and drug use. Though as the years went on, Scarface received better praise, becoming a cult classic and deemed one of the best crime dramas of all time, with it having a major influence in hip-hop and rap artists even today. And as it's always been with a popular film, merch was bound to be made. 21 years after Scarface came out, it was announced that a game adaptation would be released for the PC and consoles by developer Radical Entertainment, who made such games that we've looked at here on the show like Dark Angel, Tetris Worlds, and Hulk, and published by Vivendi Universal. According to Behind the Scenes, the game was going to be a straight-up adaptation of the film, but a few problems came up. Mostly that they felt the game script was so good that it couldn't fit well into a game, and well, spoiler alert for an almost 40-year-old movie, but Tony gets blasted in the back by a double barrel shotgun and dies. So they did the only logical thing they could. They made a sequel. In 2006, Scarface The World Is Yours was released on the Big Green and various other platforms to pretty good reviews and a decent commercial success. I remember playing it when it came out, but I never really got to finish it due to one thing or another. So I figured what would be a better excuse to see how good this game still holds up and to finally mark it off of my forever growing backlog than to go back to Scarface The World Is Yours and see if it's still collection worthy for your big green. As stated earlier, Scarface is a what-if sequel to the film, with the game starting up at the iconic scene where Tony introduces his little friend to everyone in that big shootout. Only now, he takes out the assassin sent to kill him and barely escapes his own mansion. Sosa, the drug lord that Tony crossed, is informed by his men that Tony's assets have been seized by the police and that Tony is for certain dead. Meanwhile, Tony, realizing how his cockiness has costed him everything he held dear in his life, vows to quit using coke and plans his revenge. Cut to three months later, and Tony begins his plan to retake his empire, to become the top kingpin of Miami once more, kill Sosa, and get what's coming to him, the world, and everything in it. I know that fans of the film felt that this game's plot was kind of a big slap in the face to what made the movie a classic, but in my opinion, as a fan of said movie, I think it's pretty good. To see someone as cocky and too stubborn to die like Tony Montana be able to come back from losing everything and climb his way back to the top again is a perfect revenge story, which I'm a stickler for. Plus, since this is a hypothetical story, it doesn't really affect how that movie ends, so no worries there if you don't want to mess with it. Since Scarface inspired many crime style games, mostly thinking of GTA Vice City here, it fits to see that Scarface the Game is a GTA clone, despite what some commenters think that term actually means. Bugging like a true asshole. As Tony, you have four regions of Miami to explore. Little Havana, Downtown, South Beach, and North Beach. To control each turf, you must perform missions, some involving buying and selling cocaine, taking out rival gangs, and buying fronts, which have their own missions to complete to sell your coke. Being someone like Tony Montana, reputation is a big part of the game as well. Increasing your rep consists of completing regular and side missions, buying fronts, and buying exotics, aka crap for your mansion to show off. Besides looking cool, rep is needed to unlock more stuff and story missions, so it actually means something, which I can respect. Tony can also come across what the game calls Femme Fatales, that if Montana can woo over, will stay at his mansion and give him stat boosts. Of course, none of this will come to fruition if you don't sell any coke. Tony must complete lead missions in order to make contact with a supplier, both small and large, to buy the product. Then you must go to your fronts and distribute your product to all your fronts, all while avoiding rival gangs who want your precious yayo. Now, having all that cash on hand is nice, but you can lose your on-hand money, or dirty money as it's called here, when you die as well as any coke you're carrying. So, in order to save your cash, you deposit it at a bank to have it laundered. 
as well as save your game. Just be sure to not have the cop heat meter too high, otherwise the bank takes a larger cut of your money than usual. Oh yeah, forgot to mention, uh, <laughs> the bank always takes a cut of your money. Speaking of cop heat, just like any GTA style game, the higher the heat, the more the law is determined to catch you. Though if it gets too high, the game just declares you're f and you will die from the police no matter what. To make sure that doesn't happen, you can bribe the cops if the meter's low enough. When you do this, a meter appears similar to a golf swing meter in, well, a golf game, where you must stop the marker in the right zone to pull it off successfully. This meter is also used to intimidate gangs and negotiate drug deals. If you don't feel like doing that, you can lower your gang heat and cop heat by buying it off. Though I have to let you know, the higher the meters are, the more expensive it is. So far, this is a lot to take in for a game based on a movie, especially one like Scarface. But, I have to say, it's pretty well done. Most crime games do have the whole Empire Sim thing going on. The Godfather comes to mind with this one. But I feel Scarface has done it in a way that's easy to understand and fun. Well, as fun as being a coke dealer could be? I mean, I don't know. Though as the game progresses, it can get a little tedious when you're playing through the story and it comes to a screeching halt because you don't have enough money to buy a front. Meaning you have to go take on some supply runs to get coke, then go sell the coke to make what you need to buy the front. This also leads into the exotics, and damn, I mean, some of this stuff gets pretty pricey. I mean, a million dollars for a, an astronaut suit? It's ridiculous. Granted, you don't have to buy everything, unless you're going for 100% completion, but a lot of this stuff does help level up your reputation, and having fancy cars and baubles for your mansion, like a 1980s drug kingpin would, gives it a more tongue-in-cheek feel. But as I continued playing through the game again, I started to remember why I stopped playing it so long ago. Going through the motions of having to stop what you're doing to sell drugs and wondering if the giant deal you have going on doesn't go sour because you get caught on a streetlight or something and gangs and cops catch up on you, you instantly die and lose all your money. It was putting me on the edge so much that it got to the point where it wasn't becoming fun anymore. And it bothers me to say that because in spite of this grinding, I'm not really bashing the game at all. It's still pretty damn fun to play. Just be warned that Scarface gives a big emphasis to management as well as bloody action. Speaking of bloody action, I haven't even talked about the combat yet. Being a sandbox game, it's obvious that you'll be driving vehicles and killing your way through the world with a variety of weapons. But there's some nice touches to Scarface that I appreciated. For starters, being that Tony Montana has a strict moral code against innocence, he will not kill them. If you try to, he'll actually refuse. Even if you hit an innocent with a car, they don't die, they're only injured and will walk away. However, you can kill innocents if you play as one of Tony's hired hands that you can send on missions. Also, in the back of each car you have your weapons locker which allows you to customize your loadout, as well as being able to call the weapons dealer on your satellite phone or cell phone or whatever those big chunky things were they used in the 80s to buy ammo and new weapons as well as upgrades. With aiming guns, you can lock onto your targets like the majority of third person shooters at the time, but you can also manually aim and hit certain body parts that can cripple or kill your enemies. And yes, nut shots count. Using the manual aim fills Tony's balls meter. Again, another nod to a popular Montana quote. When the balls meter is full, Tony can go into a blind rage, where you go into a first person slow-mo mode, where your aim is automatic, your gun has infinite ammo and doesn't need to reload, and you earn health for every kill you get. It's a pretty cool move to pull off when you do get it, especially the fact that you can hear Tony shouting out all his obscenities in his usual Tony Montana way. But if you can't use Rage to refill your health, there is some first aid packs in missions scattered about and blood banks where you can refill your health for a small fee. 
Besides shooting gang members in the nuts, you can also earn balls by taunting, or having conversations, which, by the way, this game actually has a conversation button, which is just genius. You can also participate in street races and completing missions, or just being Tony Montana. Hey, what's the matter with you? You in a fucking trance? Yo, sorry, bro. I'm sitting here looking at the ass. What's up? What you doing in this club, man? Oh, hey, I came here to drink. I came here to fuck. But right now, I'll take either one. Nobody gonna get fucked here tonight, I tell you that. The women here are all too fucking high. Oh, yeah, that's the best shit I heard all night. Oh, yeah? Wait till I've had a drink, then you hear some fucking shit. Oh, yeah, good time, my friend, good time. Besides the whole drug grinding thing, I don't really have a lot to say about Scarface when it comes to negatives. Mind you, it's not a perfect game by any means. The controls are smooth and easy to learn, though I could see some being a little aggravated with the menu system you use to access your empire and map. Also, combat is really fun, especially with guns, though melee isn't as effective. When it comes to visuals, no expense was spared on Scarface. Well, on the characters anyway. Even though the mouths don't always move and the characters' fingers are in that glued position, the faces are very well done, especially Mr. Pacino as Tony. Meanwhile, Miami and the islands you go to for the larger drug missions look alright enough with standard looking buildings, docks, and bridges. It kind of reminds me of how Miami looked in Driv 3R. I mean, Driver 3. Of course, it's a little busier here. But there are some memorable locations, like the Babylon Club, for example, from the movie. Sadly though, sometimes when there's a lot going on screen, the frame rate does tend to dip here and there, but it's nothing game-breaking. For audio, Scarface has one of the most unique soundtracks you'll hear in a game. Of course, the soundtrack from the film is here, along with some classic 80s pop as well as country, reggae, reggaeton, rap, and rock from both the 80s and modern music at the time. Which, I have to say, is kind of odd, especially when you're in the middle of a coke run and Rob Zombie starts playing. But given how influential the film is on modern rap and, I guess, rock artists, I see what they were going with here. And as expected, I can't play the music here for you now. But give it a look on YouTube and see if you like it. Another cool feature is that not only are the songs split into mixtapes, but you can mix and match songs to make your own mixtape. Uh, sadly though, you can't do any custom soundtrack stuff that the Xbox can do. And meanwhile, the voice cast is filled with some pretty big names, like Robert Loggia and Steven Bauer, who played Frank and Manny in the film respectively, now voice new characters for the game. There's also James Woods, Robert Davi, Cheech Marin, Michael Rappaport, Ice-T, Ricky Gervais, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jason Mewes, Anthony Anderson, Bam Margera, and way more. I mean, they spared no expense. Though the one actor that receives the kudos from me is Andre Saluzio, who voices Tony. While Al Pacino gladly lent his likeness for the character, he was unable to perform the voice of his iconic role as, well, he got older. So he handpicked Andre, and wow, he picked a winner. I mean, he sounds just like Tony Montana. Maybe a little exaggerated, but pretty good for a video game. Although archival voice work of Pacino is used from the film for the intro of the game. Is this it? Is this what it's all about? Killing, driving, dealing, swearing, then what? You're 50, you got a bag for a belly, you got tits, you need a bra, they got hair on them, you got a liver, you got spots on it, and you're looking like these rich fucking mummies. Who sent you? Fuck you! Look at me! Look me in the eyes, man! Who fucking sent you, huh? Sosa? <laughs> What's so funny, huh? You're gonna die, man! I don't give a fuck! What do you think, Montana? Huh? You think Sosa is the only one who wants you dead? Gaspar? Fuck you, Montana! The Diaz brothers send their regards. 
I hope they treated your mama well. Mama? No! <laughs> Scarface is hands down not only one of the best movie to game adaptations, but one of the best GTA clones to come out in this console's generation. The story is fantastic without stepping over the film's legacy. The gameplay is fun and solid, despite the slight aggravations with making money along with mission progression, and it boasts a terrific cast and soundtrack. Whether you're a fan of the film, a fan of sandbox games, or both, I highly recommend Scarface The World Is Yours for your big green collection. That is, if you haven't added it already by now. Now, as expected from a well-received game, Scarface made pretty good bank at release, with a Wii port released the following year, which, by the way, I also recommend that version just for the motion controls alone, as well as a PSP spin-off called Scarface Money Power Respect, which was more of a strategy game. Though, sadly, the planned Xbox 360 version was cancelled for unknown reasons. Also canned were any plans to make further sequels to Scarface, and while I'd love to play another game starring the Cubano Flame with the Miami Nuts, it's probably for the best that we just got the one game and moved on. Still, Scarface proved a point, that you could take a popular movie, make a video game sequel to it of all things, and it'd still be just as good as the source material. Something that a lot of developers don't really do when it comes to these type of adaptations. But, who knows, we might see another game from Tony Montana. Weirder things have happened. But for now, this is the Dolly Popka saying, as always, stay green, my friends. I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode and want more of me and the Big Green, then click that subscribe button and the bell to get notified when new content arrives. I want to say a special thank you to my patrons for helping not just the channel grow, but me as a creator. You have my forever thanks. If you're interested in the channel and would like to help it grow further, consider becoming a patron today. For the cost of a soda or an item on the dollar menu, you can help myself and the channel provide the best source of big green programming and more. Once again, all the thanks and love.